Mike Agarbo here, down at CES 2020 in Las Vegas. One of the more interesting companies uh, that we've talked to down here is called Mobileye. Might not recognize the name, but you probably recognize their parent company, Intel. They were purchased uh, by uh, Intel back in 2017. Mobileye is based uh, in Jerusalem, Israel, and they're one of the leaders in developing autonomous vehicle technology. And it's fascinating to see how fast it's coming. You know, we started our business uh, from computer vision based ADAS, advanced driver assistance systems, uh, both in the aftermarket as well as, you know, delivering to automotive manufacturers our technology. And, we are now the market leader in this space. We've heard about it for years, self-driving cars. When are they coming? Well, it looks like according to their roadmap, it's going to be about five years away before us as consumers will be able to purchase an actual fully self-driving vehicle that we don't have to have our hands on the steering wheel. We have, in fact, uh, announced publicly that uh, we will have our first mobility as a service, uh, meaning ride hailing with self-driving vehicles uh, launch in 2022 in Tel Aviv, in Israel. Uh, that's in a partnership with uh, Volkswagen Group, uh, using uh, Volkswagen uh, EVs uh, for that. But we have also um, you know, already started other partnerships, uh, for example, with RATP in France and the city of Paris, also around that time frame. We'll actually start this year the testing and validation. And we've just announced here at CES, these are kind of world news, um, a uh, partnership with Daegu City in South Korea, the third largest metropolitan area, with the same target, basically starting testing and validation this year, and then launching the fleet without safety driver in a real, uh, let's say, kind of uh, right hailing um, uh, mode, uh, also towards the end of 22. They've got some really interesting technologies that they're using as far as uh, being able to have autonomous uh, vehicles. And they've got two redundant systems built into every vehicle that uh, they are working with, uh, partnering with uh, companies like BMW, Audi, and a number of uh, Asian uh, companies as well. What you basically need is a brain, which is the compute uh, yep. module uh, with these eight to nine IQ5 chipsets, including the redundancy. Then you need uh, cameras. We have 12 cameras around uh, the car. And like video cameras. Yeah, it's like yeah. video cameras. And you can imagine, basically, we as humans drive with our eyes. Yes. We have basically two cameras. Yeah. And now you can imagine we don't have just two cameras, which just look you know, towards the driving direction, but we have actually 12 cameras around the vehicle. And then we have a set of LiDAR sensors, laser sensors, basically, and then a set of radar sensors. Uh, for redundancy and that's one of the things where we differentiate ourselves from the competitors because uh, we have something which we call true redundancy by separating the computer vision part so we basically develop two self-driving systems at the in same, the same time car in the same car got it so we drive you know compute completely based on computer vision and we have a second system which drives completely based on uh, lidar and radar and that helps us actually getting to a really low likelihood of an error or, or you know, a failure. Uh, so this, the, we call this MTBF, like mean time between failure, which is actually 10 to the power of, 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 of four for one subsystem, another 10 to the power of four um, for the other subsystem. So that means 10,000 hours. Uh, so only one in 10,000 hours, basically, the is there a pro is there an accident? that there would be some sort of, uh, let's say, a potential uh, for, for an accident. And the same for the other subsystem. Now, you take that together, you are at 100 million. So one in 100 million. One in 100 million. What are humans? We are actually at a much, much lower rate. <laughs> no uh, kidding. So <laughs> uh, you can actually imagine that this is, you know, uh, 100 uh, plus times safer than yeah. humans. And they say that the robo-taxi fleet is going to come first. And the reason behind that is that they can actually make sure that it works in all the regional areas uh, before they do a full rollout to, to all the uh, consumer vehicle models that will be uh, coming. Initially, the technology is just too expensive to put it in consumer cars. It would be too expensive for end consumers actually to you know, afford this option. That's number one. Number two, um, we will not have the HD maps and also the validation and everything finished, you know, across, let's say, all Canada, across yeah. all US. And, you know, if you sell something in an end consumer car, you know, you basically want at least like 80% or so. Of it's these got to work everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. So, you, you know, mobility as a service and also like self-driving as a whole will be rolled out kind of by city, by city, by city, region by region. So that means you need geographically uh, certain uh, coverage 
uh, in order to, you know, let's say, be able to put it in a consumer vehicle. That's reason number two. Reason number three is regulation. Um, you know, it's much easier to get like the licenses and regulators approval uh, and so on to, you know, start, let's say, in one state, in one city or several cities, and then expand from there. So all of these things we think, you know, will basically also be ready for consumer AVs or consumer vehicles, um, you know, until about 25. I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to seeing these robo-taxis uh, in the future. And again, uh, Mobileye is one of those companies that's uh, trying to make that all happen. For Get Connected, Mike Agarbo down at CES 2020. Don't forget to hit our website, getconnectedmedia.com, to see more of our uh, videos uh, and our blogs.